Hello everyone, my name is Provis and welcome to Offworld Trading Company, a brand new series for this channel. What is Offworld Trading Company, you might ask? It is a real-time strategy economic simulator. That's the best way I can describe it. The story is that Earth has more or less depleted its natural resources, so humanity is looking out to the stars to find new resources to exploit. Of course, Mars would be an obvious choice for the first colonization efforts. And uh, wherever you found a colony on a planet, of course, you're going to need to hire some contractors to go and mine out the resources and build your colony, right? Well, that's where we come in. We will be a company that specializes in extracting and refining resources to sell to the colony, to ship back to Earth. And we will be competing with other companies on the planet uh, to basically get an economic stranglehold. We want to run them all out of business and have exclusive trade deals and become an economic powerhouse. There's a killing to be made, or so they say. This is actually a really fun, very difficult game. Uh, it's in multiplayer, it's extremely fast paced as well. Very, very challenging and competitive. But I like it a lot. It relies a lot upon the free market and uh, some interesting economic principles behind all of that. It's actually a game that's been on my radar for quite some time. I've owned this since the early access, but it's only recently been released to version 1.0. So now I feel like we can actually do a series on it. This game also is developed by the uh, lead designer of Civilization 4, so there's a bit of a civil, uh, celebrity name attached to this game, which uh, means that there is a lot of expectations riding on it. Hopefully you guys will agree it is pretty fun, although a little bit different from your standard RTS. Let's go ahead and do a campaign. We will be able to pause as we need to and explain things so it's a little bit more our pace. Start up a new campaign. I've actually already beaten the game uh, on a campaign before as Micey Song, an expansive HQ. You'll understand a bit more about this as we go, though. Uh, so to start us off, we have to choose our CEO. There are four different archetypes of CEO. There is expansive, there's robotic, scavenger, and scientific. Each one has a slightly different play style and some different advantages and disadvantages. So expansive, for example, gets extra land and claims, whereas robotic does not require food and water, but it does need lots of power and electronics, and so on. Um, I think Expansive Micey Song is a pretty good way for beginners to get started on the game. It's very basic, very vanilla, kind of a jack-of-all-trades. You'll get to try a lot of different playstyles, a lot of different uh, techniques. And you have the extra claim, so there's a little bit more flexibility. Now, I've already beaten on this particular character, so instead we're going to go to the second Expansive character that I've unlocked, because I beat this. Paolo Rubini. The world-renowned real estate mogul has recently set his sights on the emerging Martian market. He is also expansive, so we should have extra claims, but he has a different starting lineup of perks. So, for example, Mycey would have extra claims, electronics factories, condensers, etc. We have cold fusion as a patent. We have geothermal engineers. We have so on and so forth. Lots of interesting things to do. But we will be able to expand and diversify over time. Let's go ahead and start now. As far as the settings, I believe that the default is on Assistant, which is what I have beaten the game on before. And it was challenging, but we did win pretty soundly. I have tried playing the game on Manager, which is what the AI plays on, and I got absolutely smashed. This game can get really tough. I can't even imagine what it's like playing on CEO or Guru. We'll bump the difficulty up to Employee, because I would like a bit of a challenge, and we'll see how that works out for us. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Mars. So you can see here that there are seven weeks in a campaign. We are on week one, of course. And these are our competitors. There's us. And there's all the other trading companies that are competing for business on Mars. We want to run them out of business, and we want to buy them out. So we basically have a monopoly on the planetary market. These are the three colonies that are currently being founded. Uh, so we have to look over here. I won't bother trying to pronounce these. These look like they're all in Latin, and I do not speak Latin at all. Um, if we do choose one of these colonies, then our opponents will divvy out between the other two, and so on and so forth. Uh, if we can beat this, though, we will get a perk. So, if we have the most colony modules at the end of Seven Souls in Elysium Planitia, or whatever, we will gain core sample times two for the rest of the game. Which uh, could be good, I suppose. Not too bad, I think. Uh, then we, if we beat it on this one instead, we would get a power surge. If we beat it on this one instead, we would get faster hacks. Now, we don't have a hacker array to start off, so this isn't super useful to us. The other thing you want to consider, though, beyond the perks that you get for beating a scenario, is which country is subsidizing this particular colony. There's the USA, the EU, Russia, and China. 
and each come with different perks. Now, I have no idea what any of these first ones do. You can see a little circle with a one. Reform and opening means of production. It doesn't really say what these do for us, but if we were to beat, let's say, um, this one, beat this particular colony on this week, we would get one level of EU government, and we move on to level two. If we beat a second one of the uh, European Union subsidized colonies, we would gain financial reforms, which would give us a free core sample every game, and so on and so forth down the list up to four, which would give us a mule adrenaline boost and core sample. The USA gives you extra claims, Russia reduces your staff costs, and China increases your scan range. All some pretty nice passive bonuses. I like the USA the best because uh, the extra claims are really quite good, in my opinion. So we're probably interested in that the most. Looks like we have the USA, China, and the EU available to us this time around. Uh, I kind of like the core sample and the USA the best, so let's go ahead and start with this particular colony. The other two will get used up, and three new colonies will be available to us next week. Let's go ahead and hire up our staff. Now, the way that this works is we start off with $600,000 in the bank, no debt, and we are making $200,000 per week. Cool. What you can do with that is spend your money to hire some engineers or specialists. Now, you can either contract them for pretty cheap for one week. So this particular game, for example, we would have a solar panel engineer if we contracted him, or we could spend a lot more money and hire him for the rest of the game. Which, at this early stage, is expensive. We don't have a lot of cash to spend, but we get a lot of value out of that. So that's not even a bad option. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> we have solar panel, wind, neither of which are especially useful to us at the moment. Uh, but we do have cold fusion, I know that. So power isn't especially important to me. Not anywhere near as important as water will be, because all of our buildings will be powered with water. So, we see there's a water pump engineer, and what this does is instead of generating 1.5 water per second, we would generate 2 water per second. That's pretty decent for us, especially because we know we're going to use a lot of water, so I'm kind of tempted to grab this, but the other options include uh, greenhouse farms, metal mines, glass kiln, electronics, solar condensers, get a patent lab, a hacker array, or pleasure dome. A lot of pretty good things here. Some patents also available. Energy vaults, water engines, so all of our ships are powered with water. We could really double down on this whole water thing. For now, I think we're going to go for a water pump engineer, and I am going to hire him permanently, because we are always going to want this engineer. We might as well get our money's worth and get really good value this time around. All right, let's go ahead and launch our business. This is our competition this week. Anastasia Zhu, Joji5, and Frank Dawson. This is a wild card. I have no idea what Anastasia is supposed to be. She can be any of the uh, HQ types, I think. This is robotic and this is scavenger. Let's go ahead and give it a start. Okay, welcome to the surface of Mars. So, the way that every game is going to begin is we spend some time scanning the surface of the planet, looking for resources so we can decide where to settle down our HQ. We'll spend uh, some few days scanning around. Our opponents will be scanning in their own different direction at the same time. It's kind of a race to see who can find the best starting location the earliest. Which um, can be pretty, pretty, pretty challenging, not gonna lie. There are definitely some spaces that are better than others. We know what kind of resources we want, though. If I hover over here, we can see that our construction materials will be aluminum, steel, and glass. So that means we want to find some aluminum. There's a bit down here. We want to find iron we can turn into steel, so some down here, theoretically, because this is a volcanic region, so we have a general idea. We also want water, we know that because all of our buildings will be powered with it, there's some here. We also want glass. Now that's something we'll have to refine from silicon, which is down here where the sand is located. But let's go ahead and scan. Uh, I'm going to start working my way down this direction, I think. Well, maybe we can get away with over here. Mm, the thing about over here is I know I don't have a lot of room to build. So, it's kind of, kind of contained. Maybe not. Let's go ahead and work down this direction. See if we can find some wide open spaces with iron and water available to us. There we go. Now, these little icons here represent that there are some resources here. We don't know what they are yet, though. Found, found some iron. Okay. Carbon, carbon found. Frick ton of iron. That's it? pretty cool. This what about water? Uh, not a lot of water, actually. That's really disappointing. I need more. There we go. That's some water I can use. Okay. Okay. Not too bad. So, do we have enough information to settle down before our opponent does? That's the real question. Do I settle down next to the iron and transport some water and aluminum over to us? Probably. 
Probably. All right, let's go ahead and settle down then. Uh, I'm going to choose, I think, this location. Looks pretty reasonable to me. Sure, that'll get us an extra 50 iron to start us off. I could actually do this, but no. No, this seems pretty reasonable. All right, here we go. So we have settled down before anyone else does. They are still scanning, but now we get a good idea of what the planet looks like. There's a ton of iron all over this planet. A uh, bit of silicon over here, a little bit of carbon. Carbon's actually fairly scarce. So Frank Dawson, who is a scavenger and relies on carbon for his building materials, is going to have a harder time. Silicon is all located up top. There is a fair bit of aluminum over here, though. Goodness gracious me. Okay, okay. Well, we'll want to take advantage of that. So, how do we start this off? Um, I guess a good way to describe is what claims are. So, each of these hexes represent, uh, well, a hex of land, and you can access these by using up one of your claims. These are uh, pieces of land that are granted to us by the colony. So, to start us off, we have four claims. That means that we have four tiles that we can build anywhere on the planet, four tiles, and then we will have to wait until we upgrade our HQ to get more claims. So we have to be very, very careful and deliberate where we place these claims. Uh, obviously, to start us off, I'm going to want a little bit of iron. Not a bad idea, I think. Um, this medium iron deposit is going to be pretty reasonable, I suspect. That will generate 1.12 iron. Yes, let's go ahead and make our first claim here because we know we're going to need it. Uh, let's go ahead and get an aluminum mine. Now, it's tempting to go for this right here, because it's got three on it, so this is a high deposit of aluminum. I suspect that if I build here, our opponents might build an underground nuke and destroy it, though. Which is always a little scary, but that may be a risk that we just have to take. Alternatively, I could build over here and save myself a lot on fuel, and it's less likely to get targeted. Um... Yeah, let's go ahead and build over here instead. You might say, what the heck, why on earth would you take a smaller resource? Well, this is the black market. The black market is available every minute and a half or so, and you can purchase certain things from it. So, for example, a mule, which will gather 200 of some sort of resource for us. Or uh, a network virus, which messes with your opponent's building. Or the underground nuke. Now, this thing always messes with me. The underground nuke, if used, will destroy the resources under a tile, basically meaning that somebody has wasted their claim. And unfortunately, the AI loves to target these high-level things because, you know, they're the ones that have the most value. So, I'm kind of scared to build on this. At the same time, if I build on this medium one, you can see here that if we uh, have to ship our aluminum back to our HQ, it's going to cost us 0.39 fuel per second, which can add up. That can be pretty expensive. Or, this will cost us 0.26. A little bit cheaper, less likely to get targeted, a pretty reasonable amount of aluminum still, 1.12 instead of 1.5. It'll add up. It'll add up pretty quick. Do we take the risk or do we not? You know what? I think we take the risk. I'm going to do it anyway. All right, let's go ahead and build here. That's two claims spent. We have two more. Okay, I need some steel in order to uh, upgrade my HQ. I could buy the steel, of course, but I'd rather produce it myself. And we will, do need some water and other things. Do I want two steel mills? If I get a steel mill, it's going to require 0.75 iron. Uh, and it will produce 0.38 steel. Well, we're going to be producing 1.12. So getting two of these and using up my last two claims is going to mean I don't have enough iron. That might be okay, though. And I think that it is. So let's go ahead and build two steel mills. I'm going to build them close to each other. Because, in this particular game, if you build two buildings of the same type next to each other, they give each other a production bonus. So we can see here, instead of produce, producing 0.38, we'll produce 0.56. Also, because we're built here and get the 50% bonus, this steel mill will produce 0.58, uh, 0.56, I'm sorry, instead of 0.38. So building in clusters is always a good thing. But that's all of our claims, so now we have to sit back, wait for these things to build, Robotics get some HQ resources, and upgrade Robotics as soon HQ as possible. Looks like some people are founding their HQs, which is sort of to be expected. Where are you? Both over founded. here, and you're right here. Surprisingly, next to a lot of iron, you didn't go for next to the carbon. That's interesting. Um, positioning is very important in this game, because if you have a building that is adjacent to your HQ, then it just ships its resources directly to the HQ stockpile. Problem solved. But our aluminum, for example, we're going to be building this claim out here, and they're going to have to ship the aluminum all the way over here, which requires a ship, which requires some fuel. So, 
it gets pretty expensive. There's a lot of advantages to building right next to your HQ instead. This person built the first elemental quarry. That's a little bit to be expected. He requires carbon instead of steel. But okay. So there we are. It's currently building. It's at 25%, so we don't have any aluminum coming in yet. This is our cash reserves. We can actually upgrade our HQ right now by buying the rest of the aluminum and steel that we need. So why don't we go ahead and talk a little bit about this uh, little graph right here. These are all the resources available in the game. Power, water, food, oxygen, fuel, aluminum, iron, steel, carbon, silicon, chemicals, glass, and electronics. And these are the corresponding prices that each of them are worth right now. I could buy some, let's say, steel for $68. I would buy uh, one steel, so buying 10 would be $680, and so on. I could alternatively sell it for $68, but that means that the price is going to fluctuate. The way that this game works is based entirely upon the laws of supply and demand. If there is a lot of supply, then prices go down. If there's a very high demand, then prices go up. So these prices are going to fluctuate a lot throughout the game. We want to find the ones that are the most profitable and exploit them, but not too much because if we flood the market with a ton of supply, then the prices will start going down and we will have invested a lot of resources for nothing. And that would totally suck. So let's not do that. So yeah, I could buy the rest of the aluminum and the steel and get my extra claims, which isn't a terrible idea. Uh, the problem with doing so right now is we'd be completely out of cash, and I'm going to need some Scavenger cash in order to build HQ some stuff, so maybe we don't necessarily do that too quickly. We're producing what we need right now. Um, we have almost Otherwise, enough steel. Why don't we upgrade now, I think? This seems okay. All right, we're now up to level two. We have five more claims to spend. Now, I know that I'm going to need water, because we're going to start using up power. We're using up water to make steel already. Let's go ahead and get a water pump. In fact, let's get two and get the production bonus, like so. Uh, we know that we're going to need what? We're going to need food, we're going to want oxygen, we're going to want fuel, we're going to want glass, which means we need silicon. Why don't we start working on getting some food and some oxygen and fuel? Uh, do we want to get actually even more water? I'm tempted, but we might flood the market a little too much. Hmm, let's see. Let's go ahead and get some food then, I think. Food is okay. We'll build one right here, we'll build a second one probably right next to it, and then we'll get an electrolysis reactor to turn water into oxygen and into fuel. But right now we're completely out of cash, so we can't afford that. Um, let's see what our opponents are doing. He's getting a lot more carbon, which is expected. He's getting some aluminum, lots of aluminum, in fact. Okay, these guys are getting lots of steel. Interesting, interesting. So she's focusing really heavily on the steel market. That's fine, that might drive the price down if we are quite lucky. Now you can see here, we currently do not have any water stockpiled, so our greenhouse farm can't do anything. I'm going to tell it to auto-purchase, and we're going to go into debt buying the water that we need in order to run our uh, our food. And this is where you start have, to have to start doing a lot of calculations as to whether or not a building is profitable. For example, if the price of water was high enough, then it would cost us more money to buy water and get f uh, food than the other way around. Right now, in fact, there's so little profit to be made, I'm actually not going to touch this yet. I'm going to let it just kind of um, hold off. Right now, you can uh, it kind of calculates on the bottom right here. You can see kind of where I'm trying to move the mouse. We make about $3 a second, which is not a lot. So the price of water is going up quite a bit. Let's just let it start building up a stockpile and doing this naturally rather than go into further debt. Right now, we are producing quite a bit of water, which is very nice for us. Um, yeah, we definitely want to turn that water into some more useful stuff. I'm thinking the electrolysis reactor is a pretty good investment. We'll build one over here. It's okay if we use up the iron, because we're not going to use this anyway, and if we ever decide that iron and steel is more valuable than the electrolysis reactor, we can always demolish the building and replace it with a metal mine on this iron. So, I'm going to build you right there. Got one more claim to work with, though. I might want to build some power. Now, you might say, why get power? You already established that you don't need it. Correct, which means I can sell all of it. The price of power is going up a lot right now, up to 77. I have geothermal vents right over here. Maybe I should take advantage of that. I'll be supplying power to my opponents, yes, but I'll be making a lot of money. That could be kind of nice. Frank Dawson just built a wind turbine. He has the same kind of idea. Little scumbag that he is. Okay. 
Uh, let's sell off this carbon. I don't need it. Let's sell off some of the food, I guess. We don't need as much as we have right now. That gets us a little bit more money. We can buy the rest of the steel we need in order to build a geothermal power plant, like so. There we go. And that should be all the power we really require in order to make a lot of money. If we oversupply power into the colony, then the price will tank. Uh, that's actually very good for our opponents who don't have any uh, power production, but it would suck for us as far as money generation. So we can see right now there's a shortage of aluminum, steel, and glass. Sort of be expected because everyone's trying to upgrade their stuff. That's actually really unfortunate for me because it means that the prices of these are going to start going up. Like I said, the law of supply and demand. Now there's not enough supply, therefore the price is going to be going up. This is what I'm talking about with this game. It's got some pretty basic concepts, but there's a lot of moving pieces in Offworld Trading Company. And it's very difficult to master, I find. Anyway, alright, so we see here that we got a free Goon Squad. That's one of our starting perks. I'm going to go ahead and post the Goon Squad on our geothermal plant. And what this is going to do is make sure that if our opponents try to use, let's say, a nuke or a slowdown strike or something on this building itself, then we will be protected. So let's go ahead and do that. The AI loves to steal power buildings, I have found. Uh, somebody's already upgraded. That sucks for me. Okay, now we're making a bit of money. See here? We're producing 1.5 power per second, and we don't use any of it, so we're selling all of it off right away. And that's going directly toward paying off our debt. This is a pretty nice way to stabilize us, I think. And geothermal, unlike solar, never goes away. Uh, let's go ahead and bid on this extra claim. There is an auction going on right now. I would love to have an extra claim, even if it puts me in a little bit of debt. Are we going to get it? Oh, not quite. I'm willing to bid up to 20000 because there is no way to buy extra claims off the black market. But the extra claim could be really good for us. So... All right, so what is the most profitable right now? Let's see. Uh, glass silicon prices have spiked. Steel is worth quite a bit. Um, iron is very cheap right now, though, so the fact that we are using up a lot of iron does not bother me. Let's see, not a lot of want money to be made out of... Well, there's a lot to be made out of water, surprisingly. I don't need more water right now, though. Do we build another steel mill, or do we start going for some extra resources like a silicon quarry so we can start building glass? I think we go ahead and diversify into a new market. That doesn't sound too bad to me. So let's go ahead and build a little bit closer. We'll build this one right here. That'll get us 0.75 silicon per second. Uh, it'll have to be shipped back, of course. And there's a bit more room for expansion with some extra claims if we need to. Was that worth $20,000 of debt? Probably not. But I think we'll be okay anyway. All right. The price of power is still going up, which means we are making even more money off this geothermal plant. Pretty good investment on my part, I think. Upgraded. We need 14,000 more dollars in order to buy the glass and steel we need in order to upgrade. Gosh dang it, another shortage of steel. The price is going to go way up. Good for us if I wanted to sell this stuff, but unfortunately, I don't. So, that's problematic, isn't it? Let's sell off some of this water. Get us a little bit more money. Um, I could take advantage of a black market, get a mule or something like that, and get myself some extra resources. Which isn't a terrible idea. Yeah, let's go ahead and sell a little more water. Let's go ahead and hire a mule. Uh, what resource would I want the most, though? Well, I can't harvest steel directly. I don't need iron. It's very cheap. Aluminum's pretty valuable right now. And more valuable than any other natural resource I could extract directly. All right, let's go ahead and get this mule. And let's send it off toward aluminum like so. So this little guy... Oops, I can fucking get the camera focused over here. There he goes. Yeah, see, look at him, he's a little robot. He's a mule. He looks like one of those, um, what are they called? Big Dog by Boston Dynamics? I don't know, there's some robotic thing that I've seen before that's really impressive, although they don't think they can jump that high naturally. But anyway, he's gonna go over here, he's gonna dive into this deposit of aluminum, like so. He's gonna gather a bunch of it up and bring it back home until we get 200 of that resource, which is pretty nice. Somebody targeted myself with a nuke. What'd you hit? What, what, what'd you hit? You hit my water. Of course you did. Oh well, it's not a high value water supply anymore, but it's still low. Okay, so we have a little less water production, but I think we're going to be okay anyway. We don't need this much water, let's sell some of it off. Now of course, whenever you sell resources, you are adding to the supply, so the price goes down. Whenever you buy a resource, uh, you're taking away from the supply, so the price goes up. So be aware that your purchasing and selling of resources can have consequences. Now at the end of the day, of course, we do have some debt accruing. 
6% there because we have a double A credit rating. I'm going to sell off some of this excess food. I'm going to sell off some of this excess water. I'm going to sell off what? Do we want to sell off the oxygen? I think so. And let's go ahead and upgrade. We have four more claims to work with. I could really use some glass because uh, that would mean we can actually start generating our own building materials. And glass is worth quite a bit right now. That said, surprisingly, it does not seem like we would get a lot of uh, profit out of glass. It says current net revenue of $1, theoretically. We take the amount of water, oxygen, and silicon that would be needed. That's how much glass we would get. It's not worth a whole lot. Might be better to actually say we'll buy our own glass. Let's focus on something more profitable, such as what? Aluminum? Aluminum is worth surprisingly a lot right now. We could get a lot of excess aluminum and just start selling it off. Might not be a bad idea. You know what? Okay, let's go ahead and get some extra aluminum, like so. We'll get some production bonuses off of that, which is even better. I'm going to get even more water. The 75% bonus applied to all three of these means I'm going to get a lot more, which I like quite a bit. Uh, food is actually starting to become worth a bit more to us now. We'll turn a nice, tidy profit, so it's worth doing that. Scavenger HQ has been upgraded. Thank you very much for that information. And we could also get an extra electrolysis reactor and sell off some of these valuable resources and get the extra production efficiency there as well. Let's sell off our extra silicon. Let's build the electrolysis like so. Uh-oh. Magnetic storm just fired off somewhere and blew a lot of vehicles up. I am so sorry for your loss. Let's sell some of this water. Water is declining in price rather substantially right now, which is sort of to be expected. Um, I need to sell off a bit more in order to get some food. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and get a bit more food production. Putting these the close together means that they'll be more valuable to us. Black market is now online. We could spend some money doing something else again. For example, an adrenaline boost would give extra productivity to a lot of our buildings over here, which is not a bad idea. Price of uh, power is going up due to a shortage. Good. I'm not using any of that, so that's going to be very useful toward paying off some of my debt. Sell off that silicon, because I don't need that anymore. So, even with this extra electrolysis reactor, we're still not generating enough fuel. It's very unfortunate. But we are generating quite a bit more food now, and food is worth a lot. Do we want to get an adrenaline boost in order to improve some of this stuff? Yeah, probably. Especially with power being as valuable as it is right now. Um, we can sell off some of this, and some of this, and we can sell off some of this. You as well. A little bit of that. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and boost up the production of my iron, my electrolysis, and do actually, maybe I want to do my steel and my food. Would that be better? Do I want more steel? Steel is worth quite a bit. Food is worth quite a bit. Let's go ahead and do this instead. So this is going to boost up the production of several different buildings. So let's tell our steel mills to automatically purchase the extra iron we need because it's super cheap right now. So there we go. Now, how do you win? Uh, I do not need slant drilling. How do you need win this right now? Well, in this stage of the game, we are trying to develop the colonies. So whoever can buy the most modules to the colony, so habitat, laboratory, offices, and warehouses... Um, whoever contributes the most is going to win this scenario. We want to have at least 50% of them if we can, but we're on day three out of seven, and we're still kind of slowly getting started. This was a heck of a lot easier on Apprentice difficulty. It's amazing what only one jump in difficulty can do. Yeah, go ahead, guys. Get yourself into debt. Go for it. Spend a lot of money on this patent. See how I care. I don't care at all. I really don't. Come on. Congratulations. Congratulations indeed. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I should have used... Well, I don't know. Food's actually worth quite a bit right now. The more that the price of water goes HQ down, has been upgraded. the uh, more money we could make out of some of this food. Let's go ahead and sell off some of it. There we go. How much money do we need in order to upgrade? 35000 because we are not producing enough steel and we are not producing any glass. Glass is pretty expensive right now, so we are going to get gouged. That said, the price of power alone is certainly helping to pay off some of our debt. I like that quite a bit, thanking you very much. Uh, let's see, sell off the excess food, because that's what it's for. Food is there to make us money. And right now it has a net profit of $100 per second, so that's very nice. $50 a second with the electrolysis. $166 per second with the geothermal. Steel, not quite as valuable to me, but it's doing what it can. It really is trying hard. Let's try real hard. A little engine that could, you know? 
see what we can do. We have way more aluminum than we need right now. Let's go ahead and sell some of this off. Yes, this crashes the price of aluminum a little bit because we just added a whole bunch onto the supply, but that's fine. As long as I sold it before my opponents could take advantage of it, it's fine with me. We are producing a freaking ton of aluminum right now. Maybe building a second aluminum mine was a little overly aggressive. Tis entirely possible. Hmm. I might regret that. I might regret that a lot, actually. Eh, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Sell off this food. Sell off some of this aluminum. Upgrade. We are now up to level four. All right, five more claims to work with. What should we do? What's profitable? Food is actually not anywhere near as profitable as it was because the price of water is starting to go way up. We do need a lot of water in order to keep up with the amount of power we are using. So I'm going to build one more pump because we have that cold fusion tech. I could double down on this power and get another geothermal vent. These things have been pretty profitable for us thus far and the price is going up. I kind of like the idea of that. Uh, let's sell off the food, sell off the oxygen. Uh, do we want another electrolysis reactor? They're okay. Steel, surprisingly, is worth a lot to me right now. Maybe we should just build some more steel. Mm, it's, not a, it's not a terrible idea. We could also build some of these glass kilns so we can start producing some of our own uh, glass because we do have plenty of silicon. And these are starting to turn a little bit of a profit. All right, let's go ahead and get some of this then. Uh, I'm going to build one. Let's see. I'm going to build one here, actually. We need to sell off some of these resources. Let's sell off the excess food and water, I think. Let's build another one, like so. That should use up pretty much all of my silicon, but okay. And let's get... Do we want more food? Food's worth 51, electrolysis 47. I think we may want to go ahead and get the extra geothermal vent, honestly. The price of steel is so high right now. Hey, look! Somebody tried to use a circuit overload on our geothermal plant. And now we have this for free. So who should I use this on and screw them over? If I use it on, let's say, these wind turbines, then Frank Dawson won't be able to produce any power. The supply will go down. The price will go up. He will have to pay for his power and I'll make more money. That's not a bad idea. Alternatively, I could use this circuit overload to make him consume double power. There's a lot of solar panels, actually, kind of together here. I could really mess with somebody's power generation. Let's do it here. There we go. He did not have a goon squad. So this should mess up his, uh, who's? Joji 5's power production. So the price of power is going to start going up quite a bit. We need a lot of money in steel, though, unfortunately. Hmm. Well, let's see. How am I going to get this geothermal plant? It's worth a lot of money right now. Lots of money. Goodness gracious me. Maybe we want to get another steel mill. Go ahead and auto supply. Uh, alternatively, we could go for another electrolysis because the price of fuel is quite high and we are using up more oxygen. $18 a second, though, is not a lot. I'm going to go ahead and get an extra steel mill. I'm going to put it right here. That way, if I want to, I can scrap, scrap it and replace it with a glass kiln, and it still will be extra productive. Price of power is still going up. Let's get another geothermal plant. Bam. Done. All right. We're doubling down on this extra power thing. How much do we need in order to upgrade to level 5? A lot of resources. And we are on day 4 out of 7. It's going to get complicated rather quick. Let's sell off some of these resources, get myself some cash so I can buy what I need to f um, use up the glass kilns. We are now producing a fair bit of glass. That's good. Price of silicon is pretty cheap. Extra claim, huh? I'll bid on it. I don't know if I'm going to get it, but we'll bid. I'll bid up to 18. Nope, I'm not willing to bid 24,000. That's way too much. So go ahead and take that one. You can have it for free. Yep. Congratulations. I'm sure you're very content with yourself. So the price of aluminum has crashed really hard. I regret having these things. These extra aluminum mines was a bad choice. Oh well, uh, tis what tis. Any resources that are really valuable right now? Nothing worth a mule's cost right now. Except for perhaps water, surprisingly. Circuit overload. Network virus. Underground nuke. Or a goon squad. I'm going to actually get another goon squad and apply it onto my geothermal plant. 
somebody did something to slow it down, a slowdown strike. So I'm producing a little bit less power. But between the two of these, I think I will be doing just fine. Now we're making $357 a second between the two of these. All right, that's not too bad. Sell that, sell some of that, sell some of that. We have way too much aluminum. Price of aluminum has absolutely crashed. It is not worth generating this stuff anymore, I think. Let's see. 0 0.08 water per second to produce 1.69 but the fuel cost alone means that this is not profitable as far as I'm concerned. So let's go ahead and turn off these aluminum mines. We have plenty of aluminum as is. Only need 320, so I'm going to sell off some of this excess, even if it's not worth much. We'll keep the price pretty low. It doesn't matter too much. But yeah, it's not worth the fuel. It's not worth the water that we're spending in power. So let's go ahead and start building up a better stockpile. Price of water is going up a lot right now, which is surprising. Okay. Underground nuke has been targeted on me. You use it on another water supply. How freaking dare you? Seriously, what, what are you gaining out of that? People need water to live, don't you know? Wow, water's price is getting extremely valuable right now. Might actually be worth purchasing a mule and getting some more water. Surprising, I know. But it's true. Dang. Black market is open for business. Uh, let's see. We still need glass. We still need a lot more steel. Yeah, steel has been rather difficult for us, hasn't it? Why do we still have more aluminum? Sell off some of that. I'm going to get a mule. And I'm going to get some more water. Because water's worth a lot. I can sell it off. And we'll do just fine. It's going to get me 200. 200 times about 100. That's about $20,000 worth of water coming our way with this mule, so it's well worth the $4,500 that I spent on it. We are now making a good amount of money. We have no debt, thanks to our power. So if I can get up to 17 k I will be able to upgrade. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can find something so valuable that we'll start purchasing a bunch of modules. If we are lucky. We can upgrade now, so... Uh, do we do it now? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it now. What is the most profitable stuff? Right now it is steel. Steel is extremely profitable. Good to know. Uh, so glass is worth 56. Food is worth 44. Electrolysis, surprisingly, not worth a whole lot. Steel, huh? Do we double down on steel and get more iron? Maybe we do that. I'm going to get some more iron. I'm going to get some more steel. I'm going to get some more water. And we have three more claims to work with. What do I want? Do we want more power? The price of power is starting to go down, which means that people are producing a little bit too much of it. So I don't know if I want to double down on power anymore. Uh, maybe we go for more glass. Maybe we go for some more silicon. The price of silicon is slightly coming up. Hmm. Food? I think that food might get more valuable over time is the thing. Yeah, electrolysis just isn't quite worth it right now. I'm going to get one more thing of food. That's going to increase our productivity a lot. Uh, hmm. What do I do with these last two claims? Yeah, the price of power is coming down rather drastically. I don't think we can rely upon that. Shortage of silicon means that the price is going to start going up. I could get some more glass. Steel is just worth the most, though. I feel like we will go for even more steel. Let's do it right there. And do I go for even more iron so I can supply it? Iron's super cheap. I don't think so. Um... The black market is online. Hmm... I think we might go for another electrolysis. These might increase in value over time. Hmm. I'm trying to predict the market is the thing. Which is always a little bit tricky. <sighs> Why is my... I'm producing very little power right now for some reason. Why? Wait, why? Why am I, actually? I'm using up power instead of water. Why? I think because water's more expensive, it's automatically switching over to power. That's actually really clever. I didn't know the game did that. So water is more valuable to me than power, so the game is automatically saying, no, we'll just use up the power from our geothermal plants, keep the water, and sell it. 
That's clever. I had no idea that it could do that. I'm gonna get another electrolysis reactor. I feel like this might be more valuable over time. Superconductor, absolutely I'll bid on that. That will increase the power projection, uh, production of our geothermal plants because they are all connected to our HQ. That's a little bit much though. I'm not sure I want to spend 20,000 or $24,000 on it. So, okay, have fun with that. All right, let's pay off some of this debt. We caught somebody trying to mess, oh, somebody caught somebody. Yeah, Joji caught Anastasia trying to use another circuit overload. Uh, so do we increase production of something? Steel is still currently worth the most, right? Yeah. I'm going to do another adrenaline boost. I'm going to put it right here. That'll get most of our steel and also some of our food. Like so. Excellent. Of course, now we are using up a ton of iron, so the price is going to start going up quite a bit, but the extra steel is going to be worth quite a bit of money, too. So I'm all right with that. Let's sell off some of the extra water, sell off some of the extra food. So we need extra steel and start buying modules. Now we want to be somewhat careful as to which ones we buy because you can see here that one, it's going to cost us some resources to do this. In fact, actually, I'm going to go ahead and start um, upping these aluminum mines again. I think that we can use the aluminum to build habitats. Yeah, it takes 100 aluminum plus some money. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so, we can see that these each are going to consume something. Habitats consume water, food, and oxygen. The more habitats there are, the more demand there is, therefore the price of water, food, and oxygen is going to go up. Laboratories use chemicals. Office, uh, colonies need power, which we can supply pretty well. And colonies require glass. I'm okay with colonies getting glass. I'm okay with power. And I'm okay with habitats. Let's purchase a couple of habitats. Because right now I think a lot of our money can come out of oxygen, food, and water. So we'll go ahead and do that primarily. There we go. But mostly we want to start generating a lot of money. So we have four modules built right now. Anastasia has seven, Joji has three, and Frank has one. So she's our main competition. Let's sell off some of this excess uh, steel. We're producing a freaking ton of it right now. Sell off some of the glass. Let's build another habitat and a warehouse, I think. Keep the price of glass high because we are depending a little bit upon that. Too bad none of these consume any steel, though. I would prefer that they did that, because uh, steel is a good moneymaker for us. The price of iron, however, is starting to skyrocket, which is a little bit concerning. The price of power is going way down, so we're actually not producing much money out of this at all. Which is actually very unfortunate. Okay. A slowdown strike has been used on us, which is slowing down most of our moneymakers. I'm very unhappy about that. Very unhappy indeed. But I don't think there's much we can do about it. Someone's using a network virus. People are targeting us right and left. Stop it. What did I ever do to deserve your hatred? Nothing. I promise. Nothing. Let's sell some of this water. Build another... colony warehouse. Sell some of the food. We have a lot of aluminum coming in right now, which is good, because that will reduce the price of building some of these colony habitats. In fact, let's go ahead and... Can I build another one soon? I'd like to think that I could. There we go, build another one. We have eight modules, we are tied now. There's only one, no, two days left, I think. Day six of seven. Okay, so what can I do to screw over my opponent? Anastasia, you're my primary threat. What are you relying upon? What's all this? Somebody used some stuff against you and your metal mines and your glass kilns. You have a lot of silicon coming in. I could use an underground nuke to reduce that quite a bit. But silicon is actually worth a fair bit. That'll kill your profit margins a bit. Yeah, it's not too bad. Where are you getting your power? These are your aluminum mines. Where are you getting your power? Kill your water pump. That should drive the price of water up a little bit. It's not a terrible idea. Hmm. Or I could just save my money and buy more modules. A circuit overload would make her consume a lot more power, though, and that would actually drive the price of it up, which is valuable to us. Okay, let's go ahead and get a circuit overload, and I'm going to use it on this guy. Use it on your metal mine. This is less likely to be a goon squad there. Very likely to be one right here. But this should hit some of your solar power, so now you're going to be generating less power and consuming more power. The price of this should go up, and since we don't need power, we'll start making some extra cash. I think that might actually be worth the price of doing business. Price of oxygen is going up, uh, down quite a bit because there is a surplus. Kind of unfortunate. When does the slowdown strike end? 20 seconds. Gee whiz. That was really unfortunate. Price of food is going way, way up, though. 
We got hit by another underground nuke. Let me guess. Water? Yep, water. Freaking heck, stop messing with my water. <sighs> I hate the AI. I really do sometimes. But oh well. Sell off the food. Sell off some of this aluminum. Sell off the steel. Sell off the glass. Don't need any of this. Let's purchase... Um, another... Let's build actually a colony office module. We'll start draining some more power. Stabilize the price a little bit. Hopefully this will start going up. It's making me a fair bit of cash. New, claim is New claims, huh? Wouldn't mind another claim. Let's bid on it. I doubt we'll get it. 16000 No, I didn't think so. Yep, I don't want to pay 24000 for that. It's not worth it. Price of steel has been going down rather drastically. It's still worth more, though, because the price of iron is minimal. Sold. Price of food is amazing. Really, really need more water. Let's sell this off. As soon as a black market comes available, I'm going to get some more water. If I can. Where's the nearest water supply? Wow. Pretty far away, actually. Are they all used up? They are. Interesting. The only water that has not been used up is this one. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a couple up here. Okay, let's get another mule. And let's get some more water supplied. Because we know we're going to need it. We're consuming more power than we are getting right now. Price of uh, water is going up, but the price of food has skyrocketed so much. This is really good for us, actually. We'll gradually sell a little bit more steel. Electrolysis is still worth $63. See, I'm glad I bet on this, because I knew that these were going to become more valuable over time. Uh, power is still good for us. Glass, a little less so. Steel is going down quite a bit. Slow down strike again? Freaking heck, man. Leave me alone. Well, this sucks. A lot. We're going to be producing a heck of a lot less stuff now. Of course, now we're going to build up a huge stockpile of water, so I guess that's something. Sell off that. Sell off some aluminum. We do not need this much aluminum. We are definitely producing too much. I don't think it's worth the fuel cost of doing business. Fuel is so expensive, honestly. Let's go ahead and turn those off. We have enough aluminum that we can build some more habitats for pretty cheap, so... No. Sell that. Buy a habitat. We actually have too many habitat modules right now. We need more workplace. Which I think I can provide for you. If you so desire. Need money, though. Surplus of food is driving down the price. That the does suck. Is open for business. Let's get another module. We're up to 11. Right now we're winning. Slowly but surely, we are winning. A uh, tiny little bit of interest, but I think we're going to be fine. This is the last day, so now we want to sell off everything we've got by the end of the day. And get whatever um, more modules we can. A bit of steel is going to reduce the cost of doing business here. More habitats bought. Freaking Anastasia, I hate you. Leave me alone. Go away, lady. Go freaking away. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to sit back for a little bit. Build up some stockpiles. Let the prices of water, the prices of food and so on increase. Go on. Get up there. Get high up there. Give me a lot of cash to work with. See what we can do. I'm actually kind of tense. Playing on employee is a heck of a lot harder than it was um, on uh, Apprentice. Like The difficulty level is so drastic. I'm kind of amazed, actually. Ooh, shortage of water and food. That's good for us because we're building up a stockpile here. Cool. Yeah, I sense a lot of money on the horizon for us. Holy crap, that's worth a lot. Holy crud. This is awesome. Come on, keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. You know you want to. Sell off some of this aluminum. We have too much. Aluminum's dirt cheap. So is iron. Steel mills are actually pretty profitable. Sell off some of that. Surplus of silicon means that the price is going to go way, way down. 1500 We still have the most modules, technically. Kind of curious what my opponent's going to do. She actually has a fair bit of debt right now. We have very, very little. 2400 2500 or something like that is the end of the game. We'll wait until we get toward nighttime. Then we're going to sell off everything. The price has been going steadily up here. She built a pleasure dome, did she? Oh, that's fun. Price of steel has actually gone way down, though. 
unfortunate, really. Uh, but I don't know if there's much I can do about it. I could demolish this and build one more. I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to build one more greenhouse farm on the off chance I can get just a little bit more food to sell. Because that's worth so much more than steel right now. Slow down strike again. Flippin' heck, man. I should be using more goon squads, but they're so expensive. All right, we only have a couple hours left in the game. Yeah, never mind. That was not worth the time. Let's sell off the steel. Crash the price. Sell off this. Sell off our glass. Crash the price of that. Sell off some of the iron. Sell off... Do we want to sell off some of this? Actually, I shouldn't have uh, sold off all the steel. We can use some of that to reduce the prices here. But the price of steel is pretty low because we crashed it, so I guess it's not a big deal. Sell off the aluminum. And we'll hold on to it. It's not worth anything. Sell off the fuel. Sell off the food. Sell off the water. We have $87,000 to spend. Let's go ahead and build some more... Uh, I don't know. Colony office modules. There we go. Three more modules for me. We're up to 14. As opposed to 10 for Anastasia. We should win this, but by God, it was a little bit tough. Sell a little bit more. Anything we got, sell it all off. Pay off our debt. The day should be ending pretty soon. That's it. Okay, we win. Wow, that was a close game. Anastasia definitely gave us a run for our money. So, we had 14 modules. At 11, 7, and 1. Frank Dawson is not going to last for very long. Take a look at the overview. We made most of our money off of power this time around, interestingly. She did really well cornering the glass market. Everyone else actually did really well with power as well. That's pretty interesting. She used most of the nukes, I suspect. Two of them. I hate you, Anastasia. You suck. You targeted me the most. I hate you so much right now. All right, fine. Balance sheet. Don't care. Production. So many different statistics that we're probably not ever going to look at. Stock market, though. See that our stock price went up pretty well. Yeah, that went well. We won. We should now get our free core samples every game. Now we're making an extra $142,000 per week. We are the majority shareholder, so we get most of the cash. But Anastasia gets a fair bit as well, because she got a third. So, yeah... Oh boy, that was rough. Employee is going to be pretty hard for us. So, we actually get a choice here. Do we want free superconductor or financial instruments? One of our lawyers can acquire the rights to a patent for three weeks. This could be really good. 100% power production when connected to your HQ, but it requires that we settle down next to uh, a power source if we are going to do this. Financial instruments will give us a small portion of our opponent's debt every night, which actually can add up quite a bit. Hmm. Hmm. I think I might actually take financial instruments. Superconductor's good, but... Well, actually, maybe we do want... Th well... No, we're gonna get Superconductor. I think it's just too valuable. We'll do that instead. Next time, we will look at the three different colony options for us. I hope you did enjoy this video, though. That's kind of a look at Offworld Trading Company. It gets a bit tense. Uh, it's definitely difficult, and you have to react to a fluctuating market. The economy at its finest. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, then hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Next time.